Today's video, I'm going to show you how to plaster a wall. There's seven steps to plastering a wall. We're going to show you each step bit by bit. But the biggest part of this video is we're going to show you two ways to apply plaster. We're going to show you one with a trial and a hawk, but we're going to show you another controversial way where we use a plaster roller. Now, this is totally new. I've not seen many videos of this done before. I'm going to give you the options on how to use two separate ways to apply plaster, which in my opinion is the hardest part to plastering a wall. From there, we'll show you how to get your walls dead flat and polished with easy steps and quick fit guides for anyone who who's new to plastering. Let's plaster the wall. First thing we've got to think of, and first thing I'm going to mention, if you are right handed, you go left to right. If you're left handed, you go right to left. Now you do opposite. So everything I'm going to teach in this video is because I am right handed. So if you are left handed, do everything the opposite. I'm right handed, I'm going to start from the top left. You're left handed, start from the top right. And now always the second rule of plastering is you always start at the top. Now we're going to start at the internal corners. You want the plaster on the left side of your trowel because I'm going to be starting from the left side of the wall. So I'll take the plaster, start on the top left. And what we do is start from the left side of the wall, again from the top. Now if you are coming to the very top edge of the wall, section along the top, you want to plaster a small amount just on the edge of your trowel. We're going to bring it up to the top. That way we've got full control. So again, we're starting from the left. You want it on the left side of your trowel. When you're coming to the top of the wall, you want it on the right side of your trowel, that way we can scoop up from the top and drag it down. You take it onto the right side again, I'm coming from the top. And work across the wall. This is probably the hardest thing for a beginner of plastering is applying the plaster. Because you've got to learn to take the plaster from the hawk onto the trowel. Again, wait for the end of this video, I'll go into that in detail. Now here's my big tip. Don't worry about the plaster being flat. We are just getting on the wall, and in the rest of this video I'm going to show you tactical ways to make sure you can get the plaster flatter faster. For now, just get it on. Don't worry too much about it. Okay, so the top section of the wall is done. Now we're going back to the left. Again, we start left to right, but we also follow the same sequence. We almost with Z, we come across on ourselves. So now I've done the top section, come back to the left. Start on the left corner, put the trowel on with the plaster. And this time, again we're putting the plaster on the left side of the trowel. Coming deep into the corner and coming out. Never overload the hawk with plaster, put a small amount on if you're new. And actually in general, don't overflow it, it's just going to make it harder to set the plaster from the hawk. Just take a little bit of time. So the top and the left side of the wall is on. Now, we're gonna to come to the bottom. This is one of the main ways to apply plaster. Take the plaster, now this is gonna probably be the longest stride and the longest way to apply the plaster. So you take the plaster, bring it to the bottom, and all the way up. Take the plaster from the hook, come to the bottom, Come up, and then come back on yourself. Now what we're doing is try and trowel out these lines we left behind. So come up, come back on yourself. Now this is quite a complicated way of doing it, but the easy way is take the plaster, put it on the wall, clean off the trowel, and then if you've got any lines left behind, trowel it out after yourself. It's probably the easier way of doing it. One more time. Take a little bit, and if you struggle to come all the way, just come midway, midway of the wall. You've got the lines, fill it in, and trial it out. So you don't have to do the full length if you're struggling. Just do halfway to the top third. I'm gonna show you that movement face on. You take your plaster, bottom, come down. Take your trial off the wall, and then trial out any other thing left behind. Again, we're gonna to come to the bottom. Trial out anything left behind. Now I've got the first coat of plaster on the wall. Lean up your tools and then mix a new batch of plaster. It's just going to give you the most time 
to get work with it. The last thing you want is for the plaster to go hard, you run out of time and what you'll find is you'll start stressing. If you're new, you want to give yourself the maximum amount of time possible. Now you've roughly got about 25 minutes to apply the first coat of plaster. That then gives you time to clean up, clean your trowels and then get a new mix on. Then with your new mix, you do the same again. You apply the plaster. But let me show you what you do in between. You want to flatten the first coat. Now, if you're new to plastering, I highly recommend you save some time with one of these. This is just going to mean that you're going to get your plaster flatter pretty fast. Now you don't have to use one, but it's just, just going to cut the learning curve in half. Like I said before, don't worry about how your plaster looks at this stage. Don't worry if it's completely flat. Let me just show you how this works. You bring this to the top left. Go horizontally first. Horizontally again. And then to make sure you get it really flat, go vertically. Now this, it's just got the wall dead flat, let me show you. It's only got a flat wall, no lumps or bumps. Now by the way, this is my garage, this is my workspace. Don't worry about this wall, you would usually have a clean edge to work to. This is just used for representative purposes and a way to show you to plaster. But that is the best way to get your floor wall flat with a speed skim there. You want a nice bucket of water and you want to be cleaning your tools. This is a plastering brush. I'll leave this in the description below the video also. But these are essential if you're learning plaster. You want a big thick brush. It's going to add lots of water. And it's going to make it a lot easier to clean your trowels and whatnot in between. So give all your tools a good clean. Now this is totally different. Probably never seen this before but I did a video a few months back where I tested if you can roll plaster onto a wall. It worked. <laughs> Blew my mind. It worked. But I expanded it. Now this is what I'm going to show you today. This is a roller specifically designed for rolling plaster on. It's thick. Can you see? It's got bristles and it's a foamy material. This is used and it's used. This isn't the new concept. In Europe, they don't hand apply the plaster, they roll it up. This is the other way you can apply plaster. You can put your hawk and trowel down. If you think this is just too much and you need a touch up in your house, I do recommend you learn with a trowel and hawk. That's the only way to plaster in my opinion because this, you'll struggle to get the thickness with beads and whatnot, especially with just two coats. But with plaster, you always apply two coats of plaster. You apply the first coat, you flatten it, and then you apply the second coat. I'm going to show you how to do it this way. So first off, dunk this in the plaster, give it a good roll. It's taken a hell of a lot of plaster there. The roller is piled and it's got a load on. You literally just roll it on. You can see the texture, it's very coarse, it's very harsh. Now that's because it's got thick roller, thick pile and it's distributing the plaster in a thicker manner. Now this is going to do one of two things. It's going to apply the plaster to the wall without a trial but it's also going to kind of flatten your first coat and it's going to give it a bit of a key which means overall again you don't have to be too particular about the first coat. You don't have to be too particular with hawk and trial. You just need to make sure that it's on the wall. Now look. Apply the plaster get some more and then continue the whole wall in the same fashion. It's scary how fast you can apply the plaster with this thing. <laughs> this roller is thick and if I had a pole attachment if I was clever enough it might be even be easier. <laughs> Now this leaves a heavy texture, let's have a look, as you can see, it's heavy stipple marks, but you can tell there's actually quite a lot of plaster has been applied from that roller, it's fast. But now you want to leave it for a minute, let it take up, don't flatten it straight away, because you might take it all back off again, so you want to leave it for a minute, but you will need the speed skim if you are using this method, so if you do plan just to have a trial and hawk, skip this, because the speed skim is really the only way it's going to work. Let's jump on to the next bit now. I'm going to clean my mix, clean this all out, we don't need this anymore, it's just two coats of plaster, clean the tools and get ready for the next stage. We have both coats of plaster on the wall, that is it. 
Get rid of the other bucket, get rid of your mixing bucket, get rid of your mixer, we are done. <laughs> Two coats on the wall, that is all you need. Now we are left with this texture. I'm going to go through the trial way on how to flatten the wall in a minute, but for now I'm just going to follow through the speed skim because they are very good at getting plaster flat. That's what they're designed for and they save a hell of a lot of work. So if you're a beginner, invest in one. So, start top left. And come on up. Now you can see the texture starting to go. Now the excess plaster you do get on a speed skim, bring it to the top where your tops are. And that way if you get any holes or any lumps, you can flatten it back in with the speed skim. And we're just coming all the way through. We are left with a flat-ish wall. Now that's half it done. Now we're going to come around, carry on from the sides. There we go. We've got a wall that's been flattened, and half it was rolled on. <laughs> this. I know it seems like an easy and fast way of doing it, but I do highly recommend you learn to use a trial and hawk. You'll never be able to roll plaster like a hard wall, you'll never be able to use an undercoat plaster, you'll never be able to render, which we're going to go into the hard walling stage later on in this plastering course. But again, this seems like a good trick for now, but you can't beat a trial and hawk in my opinion. But again, if it gets you out of a rut, then cool. I'm going to show you how to hand flatten a wall now. And everything onwards now is going to be using the trowel. This is too aggressive, the uh, Speed Skim ST which is this one here, is a bit too aggressive for the plaster onwards and it's a bit harsh. Now I'm going to be using the trowel to fill in any holes that are left behind, any gaps or any smooth, any holes that have been unfilled whilst we've been flattening. So that's what we're doing now. Well, let's see what we've got. Considering the texture we had before, look at it now, it's actually very, very flat. But, you can get a few of these trails, a few of the ripples there. If you're focusing on that, we've got a few holes. Like sections like that. The edges aren't very clean, as you can see. So let's go through the stages quickly. We've applied the first coat, flattened the first coat, applied the second coat, and we've initially flattened the second coat. So now, what we're going to do is start filling them holes in we were talking about before. This is a carbon steel trowel. Don't be using any flexi trowels, anything other than just your main base trowel at the moment. And um, we'll go into tools separately in another video. But for now, take your trowel, we're going to work to the edges of the room. At the top. And then we're going to come into the very edge. What you'll do is you'll start to flatten the plaster, but you'll also find that you're pulling stuff off. That's fine. At this stage, we're going to be taking plaster off. This is natural, it's because the plaster's still quite wet and it's still got a bit of reaction time in it. So what's happening is, you're just collecting the wet plaster from, as you're flattening, that's completely fine. Don't worry. What you're gonna do is just trowel down, and then you start slowly starting to flatten the wall. Starting from top, you bring it to the right side of the trowel to the top half of the wall, and we're just troweling down. If you do get any excess plaster like this on your trowel, this section, take your excess plaster, put it in top, fill it, and then trowel it over. Trowel it over. What that means is that we have now filled where there was any holes before, we filled it, and now we can start flattening it. So we're just coming off, finding any sections that have got little holes and then we're working towards the corners. For now, don't worry about anything on this side, but you want to take your trowel to the corner of the wall, pushing as tight as you can go, right to the edge, right to the inner edge, and then we're troweling outwards. Right in tight, let me do that again, right in tight, troweling outwards. Now you might see a little bit there, there's a little hole, flatten it out, troweling outwards. Now I've done the edges, now what I want to do is do the big strides across. So we're going to start from the bottom of the wall, and we're going to trowel up. And then this way we're going to get a bigger area covered, which means you're going to get an overall flatter wall. But you can see this that's been left behind. You're always going to have a trial, trial mark left behind after yourself. So you want to start in the middle of that trial mark, 
get your trowel in the centre of where that is, you want to trowel upwards. And the idea is every time we're working across, we're flattening that ripple out with upon ourselves. So we're coming in again, halfway between the trowel and the ripple. And what happens is you just push that ripple across, but everything before it gets flatter and flatter. I've just seen a section that needs fill, put my plaster in there. Do it again. And this is how you hand flatten a wall. You just focus on ripple, you set your trowel in the centre and then you work across. Now there's a little section here that I've missed. Constantly reapply the plaster to any holes or dips in the wall because if you don't they'll dry and then you'll have little textures, little potholes. You need to make sure you fill in as you go. So now in between every flat and every trowel, clean your trowels up. Get rid of the excess plaster. Don't let it dry in your trowel, it's just going to make the later stages messier and harder to contend with. Clean your trowel and with the water brush and clean water bucket, just constantly keep your tools clean. That is a good habit to get into. Now I just wanted to clarify one thing before we move on to again flattening the plaster. You don't want to rush the process. You've got to allow the plaster to dry and as the plaster dries that's when you start getting the wall flatter and flatter. So there are still marks in the wall at this moment in time but that's okay. You've got to give the plaster room to start to yield and start to get harder and that's when you can start taking the lines out, start forcing the plaster into itself. If you're trialling a plaster when it's wet <clears throat> and what you'll find is you're just moving the ripples across. So once we're at this stage give it a bit of time let the plaster cure and then we're going to talk about ways of sensing and finding out when you're ready to move on to the next stage. But you've got roughly 20 minutes for each stage, roughly, give or take. Now for argument's sake, I've been playing with the wall and trialling it in between. Now this is what you start to get, especially if you've got areas with bonding. You start to get these little bubbles. Can you see them? Now these are a pain to remove. Once these bubbles form on the wall, very hard to get rid of and that basically means you've got air that's trapped between the two layers of plaster and that's because we haven't let the first coat dry appropriately and you've rushed it so that's what happens if you jump stages too fast and you start to get air pockets trapped between the two coats of plaster you're better off giving the plaster the first coat from 25 minutes at least then you can start cleaning and then you can start getting the second coat on when the plaster is firmed up. If you don't, you will get these air pockets and they are a pain to remove these things here. Okay, so we touch plaster. It shouldn't be soaking. You can leave a detail with your fingertips, but it shouldn't be soaking. If it's where you can completely move with your hand, give it a bit more time. But what I'm going to do is start troweling the lines out that we left with the initial flatten. We're starting to now, going to start getting the wall flatter and flatter. Coming in the corners. Now at this point, if the plaster is a bit dry and at the edges it feels like it's pulling, perfect time to use your plastering water brush. Strike it at the edges and work outwards. Get to the edge of the wall and then we come out. And this just lubricates the plaster and allows it to move a bit freer without pulling. If you it is drying up and you don't use a water brush and it can drag, can leave drag marks in the plaster. So at this stage, you want to start using your water brush to start getting flatter and flatter. You can still fill in any holes left behind, but after this stage, you're going to struggle because the plaster is going to get harder and harder. And once it gets to the point where it's tough, you won't be able to pull off any fat from your trowel. So basically, we're looking at now being the last chance to be able to fill in any holes left behind during the flattening process. So use a water brush for a bit of lubrication and you can start troweling it flat. Again, working at the edges outwards. When we are flattening, you want your trowel close. You don't want it wide open, because what you're going to do is you're going to pull all the plaster off the wall. If I have it open like that, I've just pulled all that plaster off. You want a nice close trowel, and that means we're going to keep the plaster on the wall. If you have an open trowel, you're just going to drag it all off. So I'm going to have to correct that now. There we go. So you'd want the trowel to be tucked in. Tucked into the wall, and that way we're not going to pull any plaster off. So nice, closed trowel. And as you can see, we're flattening and we're spreading rather than removing. Now, as the process goes on, we do open the trowel, but we'll talk about that in the later stages. But for now, Trowel close to the wall and we're troweling inwards. 
One important rule is stay hydrated. Got a bit of time, make a brew. It's crucial. <laughs> okay, so now the plaster starting to firm up. When you touch it, it's starting to feel a bit more solid. It feels less wet. You can still see your fingertips traced into the plaster. But you can't move it anymore, you can't manipulate it, it's not as wavy, it's starting to take up. Now we're coming to the later stages of plastering, this is when you find, and you'll be amazed really, that it's when you can start to flatten the plaster and start to get the ripples out, and that's because the plaster is no longer viscous, it's starting to get a bit more solid. This is when you will need your water brush, the edges is always a good starting point. Starting in left side of the trowel, left side of the wall, troweling outwards. Now, as the plaster goes harder, you need to put a lot more pressure into it. You find you have to push the trowel into the wall. And you, it's a lot stronger now. You can feel it pulling against you. There's a lot more resistance. Before, the plaster was quite, it's a lot of more play in it. It's easier to move. Now there's resistance. It's fighting you because the plaster's getting harder. So, and then we come up. And what you want is you want to come all the way up with the trowel. All the way. Now at the beginning, we are just practicing using the trowel at this stage. You will collect a bit of fat. By the way, to rectify fat is a bit of excess plaster. You'll collect a little bit, but nowhere near as much as before. So if you do have any holes or anything, you can still fill it in. But ideally at this stage, all the holes and any dips would have been filled. So keeping your trowel clean. Try and remove the fat, throw it away. You don't want this to leave ripples in your work. It's crucial now to keep your trowel clean. Constantly coming up. Again, put a lot more pressure into it. So as you're troweling, push the weight behind you. You've got to really tense your forearm. And there's a bit of workout if you're new to it, but. And what we want to do is be pushing the plaster into itself and removing them ripples. Break the edges back. So with the head of your trowel, it's the very head of your trowel, scrape the excess and what you do is you get your water brush, water brush there, brush it in, get your trowel at the very edge, very edge of the wall and trowel it out. What you're left with is a nice clean edge, get rid of the excess plaster and you've troweled it. So now we're coming to the final stages of plastering. All the hard work's been done really. Let's have a quick look. As you can see, it's flat, got a uniform colour, and there's no lumps and bumps. So this is important now. All we're doing afterwards is just polishing the plaster. Now this is when you can move on to the flexi trowel. So what I have, this is the Nella Black Edition Super Flex. This is the stage when you can start using your flexes. The plaster's taken up and there's no chance that you're going to damage a plaster. If you use a flexi trowel later on into the, early on in the stages, sorry, then you've got a chance that you can ruin the plaster because this won't flatten, it just travels over. So this is the second to last stage of plastering, this is called the wet trowel. Now this is where the plaster is really taken up. If you touch it, it's pretty much completely solid. And it's only just leaving, if you put your fingertips in, push tight, it'll just leave a little detail, but look, on the hole, there's no plaster moving. Now, I'm just going to quickly polish the tops. I've already done the tops before this. Now I'm going to show you the wet trowel. So what you do is you start at the edge, and you come across, start at the other edge, and, you, and just trowel across. Then you get your water brush, trowel across. Now this is called a cross trowel. This is where you go the opposite direction of what you've been plastering with the whole time. And this means we're just going to get our walls flatter and flatter. And by go troweling two ways and by troweling against the way I've been plastering beforehand, this just means we're going to get the wall flatter and flatter. So you take your water brush, lots of water. And this is just polishing the wall and just getting it nicer and nicer. Now at this stage we want a nice open trowel. That's because the plaster's dried. We're not going to be pulling any plaster off at this trowel point. And if we've got an open trowel it just means it's going to polish the plaster further to a nicer finish. Now that's the second to last stage. I'm going to finish it off 
show you the final trowel I do and show you exactly how I do it. Okay, now this is the final part of plastering. The easiest bit because all the work's been done. But you don't need this as a beginner. But I like to finish my wall with one of these. This is a Rafina Plaza Flex it's a plastic trowel. And the reason I like to use a plastic trowel is because it leaves a matte finish. But you can use any trowel for the final uh, polish. It really doesn't matter as long as your trowel is nicely sanded down. You need to make sure before you start, you sand your trowels down and get them nice and smooth. But the process is the exact same. Starting at the top left and we're cross troweling. Cross troweling. Tucking the trowel into the edge of the wall. Then come in again. The other thing about this trowel, it's extremely flexible, which gives a nice ease on your joints and it's very nice to use. It's literally your wall plastered. Let's have a look at the wall. There it is. Nice flat wall, even consistency, same coloration, nice and flat. The edges tucked in tight. As you can see, side on. Got a nice flat finish. So that's the full process on how to plaster a wall. Seven stages revealed and hopefully you've got a lot from this video and you can hopefully get the confidence so you can go out and start plastering your own. Now, we've done a full course on this. This has been a five day course. If you want to catch the other videos in this series where beforehand we've shown you how to prepare your walls for plastering, how to prepare yourself for plastering, and then how to get the perfect mix for plastering, click this playlist here and it'll show you everything you need. And please hit the subscribe button and like the video if you like this. And hit the bell button because we've got another video tomorrow and the plastering course continues. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.